guys, tell me about your experience to play in Greece, Athens, in uh, Up the Hammers Festival. Amazing. I love it. I love it over there. Uh, I know it was uh, John's first time. It was my mm -hmm. third time over there. Third time. Oh. Yeah, third time. Yeah, thanks to Manolis. Um, like Manolis. Uh, it's metal. Yeah, I mean, like he, the, just the treatise, he's probably the best guy to be working with. Like uh, everyone over there. It's just like you're treated like a king. And yeah, just I love the people. I, I always had a connection. The first time I went over there, I realized, you know, how open and friendly everyone was and like how much they really liked Irish culture. I remember I was studying, I was studying humanities. So as mm -hmm. part of my philosophy side, I was doing like ancient Greek philosophy and political philosophy and that. And I was really fascinated by all that. And then I was talking to some of the Greek lads, some of the local lads, and they were studying like Irish mythology. And it was just, you know, the to and fro conversation was great. And yeah, I, just, I found them very similar to us in ways. And, yeah, it's so open and friendly, and yeah, it's great. And then the weather is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, your first time in Athens? And the first time, yeah, I can't, I can't remember what year. I think it was 2006. Oh, yeah, 2006. Uh, yeah, we met up at Anvil there. It, it was great, like, it was, mm -hmm. it was absolutely fantastic. To be honest, the first two times I went over was very shady memory wise because there was a lot of drinking. <laughs> and even even last year, uh, we said from Manolis for talking about it, he was like, Yeah, I can kinda of understand why you didn't remember much because <laughs> I don't think you stopped drinking like for the five days or four days you're over there. <laughs> so, like, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. The, but the last time we went to uh, last year or the year before, it was absolutely amazing. Like just I loved it. Just the quality of the bands, the way um Up the Hammers was organized, um mm -hmm. Just everything had just been upscaled since the last time I was there. It was it was always amazing. I mean, it always had a great atmosphere, but it was just to a completely different level. Like, and I don't I don't know how he does it with the the bands he gets over. Like, it's amazing. Like, he's such a great collection of like rare bands and popular bands, and you know the, the best of the best in local bands. It's yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's fantastic. Like. Hey, John. Yeah, for me, for me, it was my first time in Greece, yes. and um, yeah, it was. I I I knew that obviously the lads had played it before, and and there was kind of something of um, you know following like of old season in Greece and everything. But it was like it was great. Um, the <laughs> we kind of say it's funny like, how how far we had to travel to get like <laughs> al almost like almost like a homely reception, you know. Um, <laughs> Like we, we had um, all, all the bands to play at it do a sign-in session beforehand. You know, we were kind of thinking, uh, as, as long as there's actually people there, you know, we yeah. don't want to be, there's just like people are taking pictures of us just at a table, just, <laughs> just not, you know. But um, not that there were, even before we started, there was a couple of people already ready. They had like their vinyls and stuff. And I, I remember there was one guy who um, kind of came down and saw us and he's like, Oh wait there, wait there! I'm, I'm gonna go buy a CD, and I'm thinking, well, yeah, if you're buying our CD, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna go anywhere. So you know, <laughs> he, he runs down, he's still like unwrapping it in a panic, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's mad, like, and, like you know, there's people signing, like, because I, I used to, when I used to like, you know, go to gigs when I was younger, meeting bands, I always felt weird about giving it, uh, somebody an album that he wasn't on, you know. And so I kind of when people are handing me volume one. Or something to sign up on I didn't sing on this. He okay me writing on it. Like, you know, I make sure, like, <laughs> like you know what, you know, I'm not him. So but um yeah, no, it was cool. And then like, yeah, as as for like Jimmy saying, as for how the whole thing is run, it was it was fucking brilliant. Like, and ev everyone's just everyone just has a good attitude and and um like they all clearly love what they're doing and it's yeah, so you just uh, how well we're treated, you know, like having we never had to worry about transport from the second we landed in the country to to let left the country we didn't have to worry about transport at any point you know it was all looked after and mm -hmm. yeah the, the the only only thing that was disappointing was the dinner <laughs> the dinner. <laughs> they, they, they had they had like uh dinners for us but it was just it was like oh like a chicken dinner but it was just like chicken and some uh like very plain spaghetti that was that was that was my only that was my only disappointing <laughs> experience but that was before before the concert that that was at it that was when we we're in the dressing room but uh oh. Uh, that, that was, but I mean, that's the worst thing I have to say. <laughs> no, no, so <laughs> Yeah. 
No, suplex no, no sad. Now we, we we had plenty. There was um right by where we stayed. There was a little place that did Giro's and Suvlaki and everything. And uh, yeah, and that, that was brilliant. Jesus, I don't know. I tell you every day. I, I think I had. We probably yeah. had. Well, how, how long there? Three, four days. I think we had a Giro for breakfast every day. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we had Suvlaki here like once or twice a day. Like it was, yeah, Giro's and Giro's and Uso. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, we're actually uh, relatively well behaved this time. Well, <laughs> most of us. Yeah, yeah, most of us. Yeah, we learned our lessons from previous trips. But I, I couldn't believe that. Uh, yeah, it was 2006, and I think we're over again in 2009, around that time. And, uh, like, the last time we were over, like, people were coming up to me and, like, were introducing themselves and who they, they knew who I was from the last time you know I met them. I couldn't believe that because I probably changed so much I, and I, I'm terrible with remembering people's faces and I just couldn't I suppose it's just part of people's charm over there you know they're really yeah. personal and you know yeah just really great people so, and they, they, the Upper Hammers crew are just, they're like a family really like you can see you can see how they respect each other and you know they all know exactly what they have to do it's just yeah it's, it's fantastic Fantastic festival. Cool. Great stories. Great stories, guys. If we go to traveling, uh, I know you, you toured in the Netherlands and other European countries. So I wonder how did you get a chance to get abroad and what differences did you experience in contrast to the Irish crowd? Um, well, look, we, we probably haven't done as much traveling as we would like, but uh, like for us, Greece the, and Athens in particular is kind of like our is our second home. It's, it's, at the minute, it's, it's a place we definitely feel most comfortable playing. Like um, like John said, it's, it's nearly like a homecoming every time we go there. So that's that's definitely our favorite experience. Like we play in Germany as well. The class well re well received. We're playing at um, Hammer of Doom, mm -hmm. and it, it's such a fantastic festival as well. Like you know, it's again just. It's, it's another level of organization the way the, the way they, they organize everything i remember we even had like a beer man so we all had our dressing room it was us just asphics and we'll have it and this guy would come in like every three hours with like a crate of beer like on the top like, this is easy <laughs> i think we wanted to cry with happiness like this is all free. So, you both liked like greece but what did you think about the netherlands that's yeah, where i am from well, no, I love the Netherlands. My sister live, lives in Amsterdam for 15 years and uh, she's in The Hague now. So, I mean, I, I was regularly going back and forth. So I, like, I love the Netherlands. Uh, in Rotterdam, I think it was Pim Blankenstein who brought us over. But, uh, yeah, there was uh, Barogue, isn't it? Barogue is the name of the venue. That, that was class. Like, it was like uh, just such a community atmosphere. Barogue, there. Barogue. So No, I think the name of the venue is Barogue in Rotterdam. Barogue. Baroque, yeah, yeah. Baroque. You know. <laughs> right. so, yeah, I know I know the venue, but I never been there. And how was the crowd, John? Well that that was before I went. So uh I I, I, can, I can only guess. I assume they were very polite. <laughs> but uh yeah, it was that, that was before I joined, so I, I wasn't part of that tour. So, yeah, no, they, they're, 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 they're the crowd are class, like um Obviously, it was it was another little bit of a homecoming as well because at that time we had two sisters living in the Netherlands. Um, one of my other sisters was working for I think Diageo, and she was transferred to Amsterdam, so she was over there with her husband, and then my other sister was over there, her boyfriend, and my father was came over as well. So they like, they're all over there. They're up the front of the stage, and yeah, no, it was great. And uh, same boys were playing as well. It's kind of made it even better. Um, just a band of that caliber. But yeah, it was really, really intimate, but great sound, great stage, great people. Yes. Yeah, and big as like, well. Like, like if you look at Iris, like it's very small, a few people, and in Netherlands, a few thousand, and so on. It's like overcrowded. Yeah, we look, we, yeah, we, we love the, like as a band, it's, we love to explore the Netherlands a bit more. So maybe in the future, but I, I love going over there. Cool. Just so. Yeah, if I'm sorry. ever in the Netherlands, I can see you there somewhere in the Netherlands being a tourist. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, same. I like obviously I haven't played there, but I, I've I've been there a good few times. Um I, I went I went to uh saw John Oliva 
uh, from Sabotage. He was doing a show oh. in, uh, I'm probably going to pronounce the name of the town wrong, Zutermir. He was playing a show Zutermir. there. Yeah. Okay. So I did all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, I think that was the last time I was there, but I was there a few times. I had, I had uh, an ex that lived there as well. So I, I was, I've been to like a few of the cities, but yeah, it's, it's a great, um, it's just a nice, I, I, I've never had a bad time going there. Like, you know, I've been a few times in a few different cities as well. So, yeah, I'd, I'd love to, I, I'd jump at the chance to play there if someone offered us. It's a great, like, there is a lot of space and so on to play. It's an amazing experience, I would say. And the beer is uh, good. Funny, <laughs> a funny story, actually, of when my father was over there um, with my sisters in Rotterdam, the, in, in the Baroque. I'm not going to try and pronounce it the way you did, but at, at the back of the venue, it was, it was like a phone booth, right? But that was the smoking area. It was so weird. It was like a little booth inside a room. Yeah. You go in there to smoke. So my father comes in there and he's chatting away to himself and, and the lads, like, and there's other people smoking, you know, splits or whatever in there. And he, I didn't realize it at the time, but and he didn't either. But the 10 minutes later, I think it's true passive smoking. He was kind of, off his head, he was like <laughs> laughing and giggling, and he's like speaking really weird and like in all English, and none of us could understand what was going on until we put two together. <laughs> yeah, there was no ventilation in that room. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was really funny, like. Yes, that's like in the Netherlands, the place where if you need to smoke, you can smoke there, and you are like in a glass, and everyone was yeah. like in an aquarium. What you are doing there? And at the airport, I think they had also like this kind That's of right. rooms. Yeah, and I yeah. see people go smoking, all people smoking, and that will go out, and you are <laughs> like yeah. a smoke person. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I do smoke. I, smoke, I don't smoke that much, but I, I don't like smoking in an area that enclosed with other smokers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. a guest chamber, like too much yeah. smoke. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah, yeah. So guys, uh, from all the gigs that you did, which one would be your favorite and why? Um, well, I suppose I have a bit longer experience than John's. His answer will be different than mine. But mine, well, actually, no, it might be. My favorite one so far has been the last Up to Hammers. Um, I, yeah, I just, I just loved it. And I, I think part of it was like a bit more maturity for myself as well. I, like I wasn't drinking the whole time like I had been when I was younger. So I actually can remember everything and I actually really enjoyed the experience. I was mindful during the whole set, you know? <laughs> and yeah, no, I, I think I, cause I, I can appreciate it a bit more as I get older. Yeah. And then after that, then it was a uh, hammer of zoom, uh, while heaven wept. So that was, yeah, it was awesome. So you like festivals with hammers? Yeah. Up the hammers. Yeah. We need a festival like that here. <laughs> oh, definitely. Yeah, we used to have uh, Day of Darkness. Um, no, Hammer, Day of Darkness. Hammer Festival. <laughs> Which? Hammer Festival. Oh, the Hammer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. 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 Day, Day of Hammers. If they can bring that back, it's called Day of Hammers. <laughs> no. Or no, ha hammer, hammer of Darkness is a better name, actually. Hammer, hammer of Darkness. There we go. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Nice name. So John, what was your favorite uh, gig and why? Um, uh, obviously, yeah, up to hammers because it was just it was it was the first time it was the first time we we'd gotten to really play on a, a big stage where we could move around for one thing mm. like that that was but <laughs> neither Jimmy nor Fuzzy could because their guitar leads were so short they actually couldn't Fuzzy especially he had to keep walking he had to leave his pedal behind him because it wouldn't stretch so he had to keep walking behind and switching pedals and stuff. Um, but yeah, obviously, like that was just fucking brilliant in every way, and the crowd was like, you know, it was about a thousand people, and it was, it's one thing seeing people singing along to like the old stuff with Frank and everything mm. because it's been around mm -hmm. for so long. Obviously, you know, the lads played it before, but when you'd see it, a few people singing the stuff from the newer album, that was kind of going, shit, that's that that's that's a chorus I wrote, and somebody from another country that's, you know, if it's your friends and family singing it, okay, maybe they're just being nice, but it's like these are people, these are people from Greece, I don't even know when they're singing stuff around. <laughs> um, so that was good, but um, in terms of uh, like domestic gigs, so I mean, anytime we play the stage is brilliant because that's very, it's very similar. Um, obviously, it's not as big a stage or anything as Up to Hammers, but it's the same kind of attitude. Like, it's it's people who are really love what they do and, and are professional, mm -hmm. you know, it's like you're not, you're not kind of getting messed about. Um, 
but yeah, the first time, the first time we play, uh, first time I played the stage with the lads, that was twenty fourteen, I think. We were on the, uh, the the bigger the bigger stage, the mm. uh, the warehouse stage, mm-hmm. um, and that I'd say that because that kind of felt like a festival, being able to being able, being on stage and seeing the wall of t-shirts down the other end. Anybody that's played in that stage in the stage would know. Just seeing that wall of t-shirts is kind of cool while you're up on stage. Um, so yeah, domestically, uh, that first time playing the stage was brilliant for me. And uh, what was your last gig? Um, and did you have to cancel any because of the thing that that happened? Um, was I think last, I think th- oh yeah, we we did the metal to the masses thing. I don't think we played since then. There was a there was a couple of gigs we were kind of talking about. There was one abroad we were was kind of being worked out, but I mean it was still only an idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, there was no there was nothing that was so close that it had to get cancelled. So there's we're we're on the bill for a crew fest, which obviously yeah. is already that's already being postponed. I think twice. I mean, it's at the minute it's August, so it's hard to know. It, it could get kicked down the road again, but yeah. that that's the only thing we've really been attached to that's that our name's on that's kind of been affected so far. Yeah, there, there was close, there was close to getting finalised one in uh, Malta with yeah. uh, an Irish guy who's living over there, um, and then there was another another friend of mine, a German guy. He was on about having having this over around December time, but. Obviously, <clears throat> as last February or March started to happen, you know, everything just went out to win us. So. Yeah. so when Ireland reopened, what would be your first thing to do, like, uh, gig-wise? Anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, we, uh, we were pretty open to, to any, but look, we we were working on uh, getting the, the, the album, trying to get that through. But, like, Crew Fest came up. Um, so we said we take that. Look, we're very open. See, see what happens. See, see what's available. Like it, it can go either way. I think when things open up, it can either be like a, a big demand for it, and we might get some, we might get some opportunities to play, or it could be the opposite in that there's so many uh, backfill gigs have to put on the bands who have been already promised gigs that we like, we mightn't get a look in because you know there's so many rescheduled gigs having to go on short period like yeah. so we're, look we just have to see how it goes yeah exactly we'll just wait and see <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so let's do an Irish question <laughs> because uh, of the when we have so Jameson or Boosbins what was the second one James Boosbins oh Jameson Jameson, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't be mad, I wouldn't be mad into either, but if I had to pick one, yeah, I'd go with Jamie. <laughs> we, we we managed to answer that without taking it anywhere dark. So, <laughs> well, we <we're> good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, another random Irish question. Um, what makes you Irish? Um. Oh, I, I I wonder that myself sometimes. Yeah. Uh, uh, probably probably accent and manner mannerisms like yeah, grand. Yeah, how's it going? Yeah. Um, my lack of pronunciation of ths. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually it's 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 crippling. Something when you catch yourself doing it, it's like oh, yeah. I'm never gonna change. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> A friend, a friend, an English friend of mine. Well, he always picks me up on the th thing, you know. But he, but he's he's one of those like a lot of English people. He pronounces his th as a very strong f. So if I if I say tree, meaning three, he's like, what do you mean tree? Like, oh, sorry, free. Are you happy now? <laughs> like, you know, but, <laughs> but yeah, definitely. Yeah, the lack of an h thing is probably one of the main ones. Um, yeah, and I don't know. Um, sarcasm. Is yeah. that one? Yeah, sarcasm is definitely an Irish thing. Um, uh, actually, but, the funny thing um, that uh, I used to love sarcasm back in my home country, but when I came to Ireland, I was like, eh, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the way that you know you need to learn the the proper words. Like I had English in school, but it was just a completely different world. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it's, it, you have to kind of retranslate from different language, and 
yeah. probably takes on different connotations. But yes, sarcasm, I suppose, they get, like when we get on, like to say we're on tour and we meet English bands, because they're sarcastic as well. So there's one thing yeah. we do have in common with the UK, we can both be like, we can be sarcastic all day and, and laugh, you know, it's, it doesn't really work with the Americans. They just take it literally. <laughs> <laughs> it was just that awkward silence. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I mean, geez, I've got, I've had a lifetime of trying to make a joke or something that just goes dead because you, you just somebody doesn't get it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the last thing you want. It's something. It's like just a stupid little. You, you, you'd forget you'd forget that not everyone shares the same kind of just inherent kind of sense here when you say something and everyone just goes yeah it's like oh no they it's like oh no they think what i they think i was being serious now i look like a monster <laughs> to be fair okay. you usually do skate on the edge of uh i know yeah <laughs> I, 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 I rarely know when to stop with, with, uh... <laughs> okay so let's go back to off season so beyond the black uh, tell me about the reaction of the people how that uh, went the new album uh, the reaction to it yeah 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 um yeah i i suppose for for me it was i was i was probably the most i mean i don't know can't really speak for yours but i was probably the most kind of um what's the word kind of apprehensive no 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 one no one what <laughs> like obviously the reputation the band had with frank and everything you know and how well that'd be taken then but for most part to be honest a lot a lot of i i did see quite a few people who would have been from kind of the older uh scene that would have seen the band back in the day who i think were like oh i didn't even know there was a new album <laughs> and then they went, this <laughs> it's like it's it's well i spent so a, a while kind of going yeah i wonder how it'd be taken that it was actually more I think this one, Jimmy would probably be able to tell you, I think this one has probably reached more outside of Ireland than even the previous one. Mm. Um, like most most of the reviews, we, most of the positive reviews you get have all been from these kind of, you know, web zines, metal zines from, you know, legit from Germany and South America and stuff. Um, I, yeah, I, 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 I think a lot of the older crowd in Ireland probably still don't even know the fucking album happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it was a big difference. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. But, on the sound. Yeah, it was. Look, it, yeah. it was, but every band I suppose, has to progress, and you know, you're not going to be able to keep everyone uh, mm -hmm. happy along the road. Every band is the same, like, but like, I, I think John's probably experience of reactions is going to be different than ours because John is a bit more hypersensitive because it was his first album, he's a bit more hyper alert of if there's any bit of negativity in there at all, even if it's cushioned oh, in positivity. Just yeah, so that's it. I'm done. No, I just, it, it's shit. <laughs> but like, but from our point of view, uh, the reactions are great. Like, you know, um, I thought, yeah, it's, like from from a lot of the critics, there was there was a lot of like eight, nine, ten out of tens, and the reaction seemed great. And it seemed um, seemed like it had a a, a larger, wider reach, uh, audience wise. Mm -hmm. so like a, a lot of people who wouldn't traditionally listen to, to metal or. Mm -hmm. Like our style of metal, we're just really impressed, you know, by by the way the the, the structure of the songs, the sound, everything. So yeah, I, I I was happy with the reaction. Yeah. So something I found it did just just to make it about me for a second. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as, as far as reading reviews from people that kind of wouldn't have known us and stuff before, I kind of found it funny the different comparisons I I kind of came up to other singers. Like I saw one review said I sounded. The vocal sounded like the singer from uh, Atlantean Codex, and I was like, "Okay, I'll, 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 I'll take that." Like we played with them before, actually, at, at uh, No Sleep Till Dublin. We played with them, and we're kind of in the same vein. But then, and Hammer said, Doom as well. Oh yeah, yeah, for me. But then I saw another review that said the vocal sounded like Michael Sweet from Striper. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like two big the, difference. two big very difference. Good different singers, like so. And it was yeah. actually it was actually funny or not funny but it was interesting to see because the i don't know the, the album was kind of branded it like as melodic ep epic metal and a lot of the people who were doing reviews like maybe weren't familiar with the terms or whatever so they were trying to kind of categorize us themselves 
and it's just like the actual <laughs> range of difference in reviews yeah. and there was a lot of reviews like from traditional heavy metal then there was prog then there was like epic doom <laughs> then there was uh, i think hard rock was mentioned as well yeah. Um, power metal, you know, it's just, it's just yeah. loads. I couldn't, un I couldn't believe like that. How, <laughs> yeah, everyone I, interpreted the music. Yeah, I, I remember one review. It was, it was a slightly, it wasn't like the worst now, but it was kind of a slightly more negative one. But he said the review said something along the lines of that we we stuck too much to our seventies classic rock influence. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're like, uh, who has the seventies classic classic rock influence? Yeah. So it's it's funny the different things people will pick out that we we yeah, wouldn't yes. really think of them or writing the stuff, but it's like, yeah, okay, they're getting, they're, they're getting the seventies rock vibe from this. Yeah. Depending on their influences, you know, we yeah. say what they mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah, there was the like eighties as well. Eighties metal was mentioned a lot, and even uh, recording the album with like, uh, Mick Richards, who was there. And, he was like, oh, this is totally 80s, man. And like, I suppose it is with the keyboards, but we never really think of it. Like, it just it just comes out like this. Yeah. But and actually, well, he, he, even uh, Mick Richards, I remember he was on um, he was on Carl King's podcast, uh, Get Well Soon, incidentally. Jesus, I don't know if you know about that, but um, he was he, he, he was talking about, um, you know, old season came up and he was saying, Oh, yeah, they did, they, they, they did the album here. And he said, I don't know how to describe them. They're sort of like cross between Opeth and Bon Jovi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, completely <laughs> different. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like they wanted to put the band into a box and they didn't know where which yes. box to fit. And they yeah. were like, All over the place. Yeah. But, but I, I kind of understand what he means with both things. Like, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting because we haven't we haven't purposely created a box for ourselves. It's interesting mm -hmm. to watch everyone else scramble to try and put us into one, and just how different it is. Like you know, so mm -hmm. look, so I, I can I can understand that putting us into a box does help maybe uh, market it and stuff, but like it is quite restricting in other ways. So mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, You'll be just hearing what people box you in into the next album. <laughs> yeah, yeah no way to hear what it is. Yeah, I wanted to ask, do you see differences from Beyond the Black to new material you write at the moment? Um, there's, there's, there's still going to be some, like, there's still going to be our, like, trademark epic songs that are a bit longer. More heavier, more... Um, like, Sorry? Will be more heavier? Um, I don't know, but they, there, I think there'll be a good mix. Like, there's some kind of shorter punchier songs in there than maybe in previous albums but then there, there is like the there is the kind of seven minute song as well <laughs> with lots of different themes and breakdowns and um yeah, yeah I, I suppose the, the biggest difference will be the, those couple of punchier songs are in there would you agree john yeah um but even the punchy ones are still <laughs> they're still kind of they're still long punchy songs <laughs> but, um yeah, I, I think probably the difference maybe won't be as noticeably big between Archaic and this, because obviously it's not as much time has passed. It's the same lineup between the two albums and stuff. So mm -hmm. it'll be a bit more, and, you know, it's being done in the same studio as well. So it'll be a bit more consistent. Okay. But, um, yeah, I don't, it's, I, we're, we're trying to, um, I'm trying to think how to word it, just kind of, I don't know if, if all the lads think this, but for me, it's, I, I, I'm i trying to kind of widen sort of okay. the, what, what our genre could be. It's better to do it earlier, you know what I mean? As opposed to like, if we have like five albums to all have a similar sound and then suddenly one is drastically different. Whereas in this, maybe there might be one or two songs where we might already be kind of going mm -hmm. in a like slightly different way. But like there's definitely, there's probably the most recent one we wrote is way more of the uh, old school. It, it, does, does, it probably would would it, would work well in volume one. So we have one song oh. that that kind of would have very, worked very well in volume one, but then we have stuff that's maybe even a bit more melodic even than some of the stuff on the last album. Um, uh, one one thing actually maybe is there's more choruses because like something you, you, you'd probably know is if you listen to the, especially the older old season yes. stuff, the band thing, the lads have never really tried to go verse chorus, verse chorus. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, 
I I I would be a bit more in favor of having choruses and stuff, you know. So may, may, maybe this album has a bit more kind of yeah. obvious. Well, well, that's clearly that's that's the big sing along part, you know. So maybe yeah, totally, cool. totally because uh, I think since when John joined the band, <clears throat> now it, it took it took about a year, I suppose, working with him on songs to kind of realize how he approaches songs and what you could potentially do with his voice. But I think we have like conscientiously try to create um, the, the room for him to have vocal hooks and melodies in there different than the last time and um, just because i know it's going to work well with his with his voice and the way he approaches songs so it's yeah that that, that will be a bit of a difference because it's, mm-hmm. there's, there's that more more of an effort just to have that like consistent chorus that maybe repeats two or three times in a song that he can get a hook into you know so Oh, I actually can't wait to hear it whenever that will. <laughs> yeah, who knows? <laughs> Let us know if you find out. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> um, random Irish question: uh, What is your favorite Irish celebration? Uh, I won't say funerals. Six Nations, whenever we win. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's, I suppose the only thing kind of really get behind because we're not that good at uh, soccer. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, Six Nations rugby teams always a good one for me. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, now maybe uh, collectively shitting on whoever enters Eurovision. <laughs> 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 that's a good one. Every, every, everyone enjoys that. Do you hear the Irish fucking shy Ireland's one? Yes, that, 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 that's a good, a good Irish yeah. tradition, I think. You won't believe what Spain was wearing. That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, I know John uh, Jess, your partner likes a lot of Eurovision. You like also? Yeah. Would you yeah. consider to, you know, to try to go once in Eurovision? Um. I, I I wouldn't I wouldn't rule it out. Um, may, maybe maybe uh, yeah. I don't know. It's I I I actually a few years ago a friend of mine, she had entered in the uh, I don't know if you know in the late late show they do this Euro song thing or no you don't even know if they do it anymore but they have like the five top entries and they'd all perform and the public would vote so and she actually was on that one of the years I'm not sure where she finished but she didn't get through but the next year I had written a song. I've written it a few years ago, but as a kind of like duet thing, and I I said it to her. I was like, "What do you think about getting this on a?" Oh no, I had I I just said it to her about the fancy recording vocals on this, and she was like, "I think this would work as a, Euro- a Eurovision song." But then, just you know, one thing or another, just because she kind of knew people, it just sort of didn't happen. But if you saw, um, I don't know if you saw Jorn Land's attempt this year for Norway. Now they didn't get through, but it was just oh. it was just it, no, it just it, it was brilliant. It just sound, it just sounded like any of his other kind of catchy sort of okay. hooky songs like it wasn't and if there was a good song like that like i wouldn't totally rule it out um, I, i'd have to strongly advise against it though just because of the, <laughs> the political nature that i i think it's a little yeah. bit degrading like because you see you see oh like, yeah yeah Lauren, you know and they, they're up there and it doesn't matter how good they are and how much people actually like them it's just if they're not in that political zone where, where they're going to get the votes and that it's no, I, th- I think it's a dead end, really. Yeah, I, I think, I think if you entered it, just go look. It's a fucking bit of crack, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think if you entered it with that attitude, I would go look. I'll just, you know, um, but no, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't be uh, breaking me back trying to get onto it or anything. But you never know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe I'd, maybe I'd have to have left the band first if, if I ever, if I ever leave the band, maybe. maybe Maybe they would fire me over that, but uh, <laughs> we thought, yeah. we thought season. <laughs> yeah. I know, look, I don't know. Like, as I said, it could be a good night out, depending, like, particularly if it was in somewhere like I don't know, Israel or some bit of a trip away. <laughs> yeah. be a nice, nice night out for the rest of us. Bit, bit controversial, though. Yeah. Oh, true. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just try to think of one of the furthest places we could go. Uh, like. Mars. <laughs> Mars. <laughs> First event. <laughs> I think Australia, yeah, it's uh, part of Eurovision. Mm. Yeah. Think, if, yeah, if Australia yeah. can end, if Australia can enter, maybe twenty years there will be a Mars entry. Who knows? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, if, we, if you are going for it, go for when Australia are hosting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Good. And this year is in the uh, Netherlands, if I'm not wrong. Yeah? I think so, yeah. Not sure. Cool. Nice. Ah, let's ask the random Irish questions. Okay, tell me about your favorite place in Ireland. Um, mine at the minute, like bands, it changes every week or every few months. At the minute, it's uh, anywhere around Wexford. That's what I was um, Yeah, we rented out like a, a cottage there. It's like a 100 year old cottage. But it was, I forget the name of the town. It was about half an hour away from the say core town, out in the middle of nowhere. But like a kilometer from the cottage we were staying in was like a beach. Right, and it, it was like a private beach nearly because you, you wouldn't find it off the road. It was just so secluded. And it's like you had this, you could see for a mile along the coast. And uh, oh, it's just beautiful. Like, and I don't, I still don't think too many people know about this kind of beach area. So that's my favorite place at the moment. We even went down there, like, it could have been in September or October. Like, it was quite cold, but it was just nice just to have that seclusion. You feel like you have the whole place to yourself. It was great. Yeah. Well, don't tell the name because otherwise our viewers will go there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, we sit on the beach. And, well, we all know how that ends. <laughs> and because you spoke before about soccer and uh, rugby, what is your favorite? Football Steve. or rugby? Oh, uh, <clears throat> I don't. It's a tough one. It's, it's definitely rugby to play and probably probably rugby to watch, but I do like the kind of dramatics and uh, off the pitch <laughs> like antics of the Premiership. Oh. It is a bit like EastEnders for for men. So. <laughs> Good. And you, John? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be I'd be more. Fo it's, it's it's funny. I, I probably should like rugby more because it's it's definitely seems to be played uh, a lot more honestly, better spirit than football. But for whatever mm -hmm. reason. Um, now I'd be more in football. It's it's annoying because I'm I'm a, 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 a other other people from Dublin will probably immediately hate me in about three seconds. But I'm a Shamrock Rovers fan, and mm -hmm. um, they they play they play in Tala. And I moved to Tala about a year and a half ago, and I was like, finally, I, like there are only stadiums like only a short walk from here, you know. And I'm finally thinking, okay, grand, I can go stack on games. And a month into the season, COVID happened, and now it's all behind closed doors and. By, by, by the time it's open, I'll probably have followed Jimmy DiCarlo, so I won't even be here anymore. <laughs> this is that, that's just a button. I don't even know what the Carlo team is, so you're only disappointed because the Shamrock Rover Stadium is amazing. Like. Yeah. The Carlo one is just like some kind of man shape that's been built by a 70 year old on the side of a field. All right. So, so that was all for the evening, but before we round up, let's have a bedtime question. What mm -hmm. stories were your parents reading to you before the bed? Um, I don't know. I, I, I have a vague memory of being read stories, mm -hmm. but I can't really uh, recall any specific ones, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm afraid I have to give you just an absolute dud of an answer. Can't remember. So, do we have you any recommendations for the viewers who are going to sleep for an Irish uh, story? I, no. Um, but back to what you're saying, John, I, I can't remember the stories either, but I'm assuming now that I'm a parent, I'm assuming yeah. my parents did what I'm doing now. So, if like your child is, like to say, displaying some kind of behavior, like whinging or whatever. You'd make up a story. You'd say, once upon a time, there was this girl yeah. who whinged, and then there'd be all these like bad guys come out of the way, and the moral of the story would end up being just don't whinge because it just ends bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the kid get angry. At least that's what I did when my mom make a story about me. I was pissed <laughs> off. Oh really? <laughs> well, yes. She didn't do it totally enough then. You know, you have to come up with all kinds of weird names and. Yeah, yeah it took a few right. weeks before I was like, oh, this is a story about <laughs> me and so on. And I did like it and I was angry. <laughs> I might have not done yet. <laughs> so, yeah. But Jimmy, so. do you read any uh, like a fairy tales for your kids uh, mm -hmm. before like a bed story or anything like that? What I uh, used to, for the first, yeah, first five, five years, yeah, I used to. And uh, I used to play guitar, actually, because I, I write a lot of um, instrumentals on the acoustic. 
So oh. they used to love like the story, and then they, they wouldn't go to sleep until I played something that I'd written or you know something on the acoustic. So even now we actually do, even though they're ten and eight, they still love just hearing the music before, and it, it settles them like it's great. Oh. But, yeah, I would have read all the classic stories like Grimm Brothers and all those tales. Hmm. Are you into uh, metal, your kids? Uh, yeah, at the minute, uh, they love Orden Ogan. They, they love them. Oh, Orden Ogan. I'm a bit worryingly, I suppose. I shouldn't be saying this in case social service is here, but uh, be Ale Storm, you know, drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're pirates. And who doesn't like pirates? Oh, of course. <laughs> I suppose which which kid would lo uh, love to have a father, cool father like that? <laughs> well, it, yeah, thanks, but yeah, but I, the worrying thing is when they get to thirteen, it's like literally from hero to zero. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's starting to happen now. Like, you know, I can't really do anything, and they're like, "Oh, stop doing that! It's so cringy." Not around my friends. <laughs> <laughs> At the rebel stage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, getting there. And John, any funny stories about uh, when you introduce yourself with your surname? <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's for me at this stage, they're probably not that funny because I've heard every like version of a reaction. But yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get. Um, I mean, there'll be people who like, wouldn't believe. Oh, you know, I I remember one time uh, I was going, I was going flying to New York to see Dream Theater, um, mm -hmm. and I got stopped at customs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the guy, the guy says my name. He goes, oh, he goes, uh, oh, John Bonham. I said, yeah. And he goes, are you a Led Zeppelin fan? And I was like, oh yeah, 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 they're okay. And he's like, you, you know why I said that, right? And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and he's like, they're, they're drummer. And I was like, yeah, no, I know. <laughs> his, his, his name is John Bonham. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I know. I've, I've, I haven't made it to this stage of my life having not known this. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think we said that to you as well on your audition. It's like, yeah, but come on, what's your real name? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's me, yeah. John Bonham. <laughs> oh, and the, the funny thing is, uh, drums are the one thing I'm no, I'm allowed nowhere near to practice. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. So, with that effect, we are ending tonight. So, thank you for the viewers who are watching uh, the interview. And don't forget to subscribe as we will be back uh, next week with an uh, Iris interview. And also, uh, below are the, all the links to support uh, Old Season. And we will post also on the group the links so you can buy some merch and support uh, and follow Old Season. And we want to thank John and Jimmy Blansfield for telling us about Old Season and having a good crack uh, with us. And I'm now passing the microphone uh, to the guys from Old Season. Hey, thanks for having us. Oh, it was a bit of crack. And like I said before, you went live. It's just nice to speak to older people outside our house yeah. and work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, and it, it flew in as well. Like I'm looking at the time there; it says an hour and a half. Uh, I don't, I don't know, how, don't, I don't know when that happened. Until I got to the end. It's, I, I could, I could have kept going for. Uh, yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's go. So, so yeah, we have to go uh, sleep. So thank you for <laughs> thank joining you. us. Thank you guys. Having crack. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.